Hi everyone. Um, I hope uh, I'm audible to everyone. Um, uh, my name is Sriya Bansal and welcome to my talk today where we talk about handling errors the um, graceful way in Python. Uh, before starting, uh, I think you already got introduced to me a little bit, but I'll just go over it again. Um, my name is Sriya Bansal, and I'm currently working as a software engineer at Microsoft. And uh, I think this is my third PyCon I'm speaking at, uh, virtually only this time, though I couldn't attend. So um, let's get right into it. So uh, what we are going to talk about today is uh, the very important part that every software uh, developer here, right, would agree that errors are the bane of a programmer's existence, right? Things rarely go planned um, in the world of software engineering. You write, um, you write an awesome piece of code, you're ready to execute it, right? You build a very powerful machine learning model and then poof, right? Python throws an unexpected error, ending your hope of quick code execution. So I think it would be wise to conclude that errors are unavoidable while you are writing code. And in a way, um, it would be also wise to say that dealing with bugs and errors, it what it, that's what actually you know builds your confidence. And in the long run, it also teaches you some valuable lessons along the way. Hence, this tells us the answer to our very first slide, which is why do we do error handling, right? Why is the very concept of error handling required? Now, we'll go a little bit deeper into it, right? And we'll talk uh, a little bit in detail about what exactly error handling is, what are errors, right? How do we deal with errors, right? And what are the different situations we should keep in mind? So uh, we know that a Python program basically terminates as soon as it encounters an unhandled error, right? And these errors can broadly be classified into two classes. First, we think of that as syntax errors. And second, we think of it as logical errors, right? Or we call it as exceptions, which is what the talk is about today. When we talk about syntax errors, these are errors which are caused by, you know, when you're properly not using the syntax, wrong way of declaring the errors, right? You don't keep in mind certain syntax, right? Or basically you're not uh, understanding the syntax, what Python wants you to do. That's what we consider as syntactical errors, right? But then we also have something which are known as logical errors. So what happens is many times a program can result into an error after it is, you know, uh, when it is running, right? And even though it does not have any syntax error, such types of errors, we think of it as an exception, right? They are called as runtime errors. And uh, Python itself, Python library itself has defined a lot of built-in exceptions, right? Uh, for example, we have assertion error, we have floating point error, overflow error, name error, and the list is very long. And whenever these exception occurs, the Python interpreter basically stops the current process and passes it basically to the calling process, right? And it keeps on passing it to the calling process. The error keeps on percolating to the calling process until and unless the error is handled. And if you don't really handle that error, right, the program will simply crash. Let's take an example. Let's say you have uh, written a program where a function A calls function B, function B calls function C. So if an error occurs in function C, right, and it is not handled in function C, it passes on to function B. And then if it's not even handled in function B, it passes on back to function A. So the error is going back to the functions which are calling those, right? And if you don't handle that error at all, an error message is simply displayed, right? And your program comes to an unexpected halt. So that is why um, Python, just like any other language, provides us with the provision to handle exceptions, as you might have seen in other languages as well, right? And in other languages, you might know it as try and catch block, whereas in, whereas in Python, I really like this actually, we call it as try and accept block, right? So try block basically allows you to write the code that is going to have error, right? If there is a certain set of code that you've 
think that might come across some errors right that piece of code which is vulnerable to error uh, the better word to say is is basically goes into the try block and the code right um, which uh, so for example if any exception occurs inside the try block right the except block is basically triggered in which you can handle the exception right because as now because of this because you are into the except block the code will not halt right it will not go into the halt state right but the flow of the except block will basically uh, take care everything that you want to take care of so here is a small syntax representation for that um the critical operation right which like i said is prone to error and which can raise an exception right it goes into the try block and then the code that handles those errors that handles those exceptions goes into the except block right so we thus choose what operations to perform once we have actually caught the exception right so there's like a block of code which uh, the responsibility for which is just to take care of the exceptions which come you know in a vulnerable piece of code right so trying and accept remember goes hand in hand okay that is the syntax to write is uh, to write and to use both of them together if you are just simply writing try block or if you just simply uh, using a accept block you can face errors by uh, choosing that kind of implementation so let's take a very simple example i think the best way we can go ahead is to just take examples and understand so here uh, there's an example where we have a um, function where we are dividing two numbers okay so python interpreter will basically raise an exception right when we basically try to divide a number with zero that's basic mathematics so when it does we can take some custom action right on it and we can do something in case we uh, encounter an error and we can handle that in the except clause okay also understand that uh, whenever a python interpreter basically raises an exception it is in the form of objects okay so whenever you have an exception the exception always comes in as an object here we have uh, taken that object as e okay and uh, it is in the form of object that basically stores the information about the exception right what kind of an exception it is right and what kind of message like earlier we talked about we have so many exceptions right we have um an overflow exception name error exception assertion exception so similar type of exceptions will occurs when you will try to divide a number with zero okay and also with every exception right every exception type so like i said there are a lot of exceptions and all of those exceptions basically in python they inherit from a base class which is which is exception class right so whatever exceptions you have right they all are inherited from the base exception class so now uh, in this example right um, when we were dividing two numbers right python interpreter will basically raise like an exception over here whenever you will try to divide the um, when you will you'll try to divide 10 by 0 so the previous example that we just saw right it did not mention any specific exception right it was just a basic base exception class as you can see over here right uh, here we did not have any specific exception that we are trying to catch right and that is not a very good programming practice right as it will catch all the exceptions right there are a lot of exceptions and no matter what exceptions comes in your code it will just simply catch all of them right and it will handle every case in the same way so no matter what kind of exception occurs it's going to show you the same message for all of them right again that's not a very good exception practice for every specific type of exception you should have a specific way of handling all of them right and with that the next thing that comes is how do you catch specific type of exceptions so here the syntax for that is actually very simple a try clause can have any number of except clauses to handle different types of exceptions however only one kind of one of them will be executed right in case any exception occurs so although you can associate multiple except blocks with a single try block not all of them are going to be executed with the try block okay and only one of them will get actually executed so what we do is we actually create a tuple of values so you can uh, i would say catch a single exception also for example except value error you can ex uh, basically expect just that kind of exception also or you can have like multiple exceptions clubbed together right and you can handle them together in a particular except block as well 
So in the first example, you see except value error where we are just um, you know, taking care of one exception. But in the next one, we are taking care of two exceptions. And in the last one, any error apart from the above three errors are basically taken care of in the last except block. So this is a good practice, right? To basically uh, catch specific type of exceptions and to handle them and to segregate those error scenarios separately, okay? And yes, you can have as many except blocks as you can, right? You can uh, club a lot of them together also and you can basically have one level of segregation for all exception blocks as well. So now again, let's take a look at the piece of code over here. So in this code, what you will see is, again, we have the divide function, right? And in this code, what you will see is that the exception that is being raised, it totally depends on the input that the user is going to give, okay? So if the user basically gives a value B in the input, so any value of A is acceptable, right? But in the input B, if you give a value zero, right? The Python interpreter will basically raise a zero division error. So it's not even going to read the rest of the code, which is the print statement, an array declaration, and then a print statement again. It's not going to read all of them. It's just simply going to go to the zero division error and your code will simply terminate at that point, right? But what if you give valid values of A and B and then, right, you come to the um, declaration of the array A and then you do print A of four. So in that case, you're going to go in the uh, different error, which is the index error over here, right? Because you're trying to access um, element of the array, right? Which is not really valid over here, right? So an index error will be raised by the Python interpreter, right? So here, every except block that you have has been defined for both the exceptions as one of them receives the exceptions of type index error and the other receives the exception of the type zero error. And the moment you come across an error, that's where you're actually going to um, halt the code and go into the except block. So you're not going to go and execute the rest of the lines. Now that was about how you can uh, do use and try block, uh, catch bl uh, except block, I'm sorry. It's still in that try uh, catch and accept, but yeah, uh, you can have multiple accept blocks. But what if uh, you also want to consider the scenario where you you yourself wants to raise some errors, right? So even though exceptions in Python are automatically raised in runtime, right? When some kind of an error occurs, there are ways to have custom and predefined exceptions also that can be thrown manually as well for raising it for specific conditions, right? On a scenario where you use the raise keyword. The idea being that you do not really want to wait for the, um, you know, uh, interpreter to throw you an error, right? You want to make sure that your code is so strictly and well-defined that whenever an error com uh, comes up, right, you have written those certain keywords and assertions yourself where you know where you want to throw those errors. So this is kind of an except, uh, optional case. You can op uh, optionally pass values also to those exceptions, right? To clarify what kind of and why that kind of exception is being raised. Again, the syntax for that is very simple. You have a try block. Again, the critical code goes into that. And on specific like condition, right? Or otherwise as well, if you just want to test out the code, you can do race. And then after that, you can just write some error over there, right? And you can just mention a message also as in why you are raising that kind of a error, right? And in the accept block, you are going to raise that particular error. That's it says some error over here. And then you can just do some sort of, um, you know, printing statement on that, or maybe how do you want to handle that piece of code? So here, if uh, you will see, again, we have uh, a syntactical code over here. You have a try block, which has a variable A, which has the values one, two, and three, right? And now you're calling a function is string empty. So in this piece of code, right, the variable A can hold whatever value that is assigned to it. Here, we have assigned it a number, right? And we are passing it to a custom method, which is, is string empty. That checks whether the variable passed has a string in it or is it empty or not, okay? So it could be either a string or it could be an empty string as well. But what we did was we orchestrated the code to be written in such a way that we're actually throwing a type error because we are actually uh, assigning a number to a variable. Right. So in this method, we are checking if the variable is a string or not. 
and it holds a value or not. So in this case, it is supposed to be a string, but it is assigned as a number. And that is why we are raising a specific exception type error or a value error in this case, right? So what will happen is whenever you'll try to execute this piece of code, right? You're gonna come across the type error exception, right? Wherein the type of A in the first if condition, the type of A is not equal to string. And that is why you are raising a type error where you are saying that A has to be a string. Okay, so like we talked about the syntax, you do raise, you do type error, you mention the error that you really want to raise. And after that, you have the part that you are mentioning a message also, because you just don't want to throw the errors, right? That's not what the objective is. You want to throw out the errors, but the client should also know the relevant reason why that error is being thrown. thrown. So that's why... Uh, mm, Although uh, sending a message is completely optional, but it's definitely a good practice to do that because when you're on the other end, when you're on the receiving end of errors, it can become difficult on the debugging end to understand why that error has been thrown. So as a general practice, I always recommend to throw a relevant and a readable message to the client, right? Not giving any uh, details which are uh, internal to the server, but also making sure that the user understand all those errors and they can do relevant changes which are required so that it's easier for the client to take relevant actions on top of those errors. So that's what the overall idea is. Next, not just try and accept, but Python as a language gives you a lot more functionalities on top of that as well, which can actually help you to, um, you know, make your code more robust, right? And you can handle multiple scenarios that come along with it. For example, in some situations, you might want to run a block of code, right? Um, if the code inside the try ran without any errors, right? And for those cases, you can use the else keyword also along with the try keyword, okay? Again, let's take an example. So again, the try block will have your critical keys of code, right? On some specific condition on otherwise, let's say you want to throw some error and you have sent an optional message as well. Now in the accept case, you're just handling the error. So remember that the accept uh, clause or the accept block of code only execute when there's an error. If there is no error, the accept block will never ever execute, right? It only executed, only gets executed if we have an error, if we get an error in the try block, right? And we are handling the exception in the, in the object that we have as E and we're taking relevant actions. Apart from that, in the else block, that else block only gets executed if no exception has been raised, okay? So only when the code was exception-free, like I, uh, I like to say it, then only you have your else block executed. So let's see, here we have again a piece of code in which you have a try block, you're entering a number taken by the user, and then you're asserting, right, whether the... Uh, I would say the remainder that you got on division of that number with two is zero or not. Basically, you're trying to see whether the number is even or not. So what will happen is if you will pass an odd number in this code, right, you will go into the accept block, okay? And you will simply get the message, not an even number. That will happen when you're passing an odd number. But if you will pass an even number, the accept block is not going to be executed because the number was indeed even. And you will move to the else block where you will see that the reciprocal of that number will be computed. So if you enter the number four, you'll get the remainder zero and you'll simply from the try block, you'll go to the else block. And when you will do one by four, which is for the original number, you'll get 0.25. And then you'll just print that output, right? So. If there's a try block, you'll execute. If there's an exception, you'll go to the accept clause. And if there is no exception from the try block, you'll go to the else block, right? However, in this code, if you will pass zero, right? Now there's a scenario, uh, let's say you are passing zero. So when you do zero mod two equal to zero, that's actually a zero division error, right? So the code, right, will go into the accept clause, right? And here, even in the accept clause, what will happen over here is you will actually have a 
trace back over here right trace back basically helps you to understand and trace back on what levels your code basically you know uh, tried to give you an error and how do you trace back that error right so what will happen is if you basically pass zero over here you get a zero division error right as the code inside else is not handled by the preceding except so sometimes what happens is a, a code may be prone to error right and here in this case when there was a zero division error you did not handle that in except and you did not handle that in else as well so in that case you'll have a proper error where no error handling has been done so now in the uh, another part that you have along with it is finally as well so the try statement is python can also have a finally clause now this clause is executed no matter what and is generally used to you know uh, release external resources let's take a real example for example you are connected to a remote data center through your network or working with a file or like you know a gui a graphical user interface in all of these circumstances you must clean up the resources before the program comes to a halt right irrespective of the fact whether your code executed successfully or not you have to make sure that just because you came across an error you're not still holding on to the resources now these actions closing a file gui or disconnecting from the network are performed in the finally clause to guarantee the execution of the code now here is an example um, for that you have let's say a function where you are reading a file's content right and in the try block you are opening the file right you're getting access to a json and you're reading that json right but in some case let's say while opening it you come across an error due to some server issues right now what will happen is although you are giving a relevant message to the user that you were not able to read the specified file and you are uh, handling the exception or that error well you also need to make sure that even after the exception has been raised the finally block is being executed right which is closing to the access to that file now remember people do get confused between the finally block and the um, else block over here the else block will not execute if the except block is executing but here in this case the finally block will get executed no matter um, i would say uh, whether you did face an exception or whether you did not face an exception so that's very crucial when you're holding on to resources in your code and you might want to let go of them uh, making sure that you're not holding to the resources um irrelevant of your use case and the last one that is very important and that's very important to conclude as well is where you see all of them together finally that is where you have try except else and finally so in this code you have a try block you have an array and you're trying to access anything at the index 1 if you have an except block right we are creating an array over here in with three elements and that is the maximum index that it goes up is to do but when you try to access the second index right now it will not raise an exception and control will finally go to another block right and then to the finally block right but here we need to observe that finally block has been um, triggered even though the exception was not raised so if you do temp of 1 over here you will execute the else block and then you will execute the finally block but if you do raise an exception you will execute the except block and the finally block so finally block irrespective of whether you faced error or not an except and um, i would say else block goes does not go in hand in hand right so if it, either you execute the except clause or you execute the else clause right so these all basically in a nutshell form a very important part of how do you really want to error or like i would say handle the scenarios right using try and accept is just the way you get started into this journey right but what if you want to go one level deeper into it right another scenario that you might consider is that what happens if the errors are basically raised in except or finally block right what if you've written some piece of code right and the error actually comes into the um, finally block or the except block let's say you're doing something to handle the error in the except uh, block and the error happens in the except block itself right so if an error occurs while you're actually handling something in the except block itself the finally block is still there to save you right so you do an error in try block the except block is there for you but what if you do error in the except block is itself then you also have finally block to basically uh, take care for you 
right now over here once an exception or an error is raised in the except block the finally block is triggered right but the program still goes into a halt state post to that and the flow will still get broken finally block will help you to raise relevant um, i would say or help you to relevantly show the error to the user but the program will still go into a halting state but if an error occurs in the finally block right uh what will happen over here is um during handling there also in the finally block you can raise an exception right and it will still show you um the finally error so the finally block won't be completed beyond this point right and the exception is still thrown right so that's what the overall idea is i hope that that was useful for all of you to consider different scenarios um uh again the idea being is that you start small but as soon as you realize that your complexity of the code is increasing right when you're dealing with objects on a very frequent basis right where uh, you're dealing with a scenario where you're coming across uh, errors very frequently you're coming across a situation where there's a situation you know you're trying to uh, place an order you're building an e-commerce system you're trying to check out the items in the cart right and there's some error but you still want to show relevant messages to the users so that they can basically get their order id right and where whether it's taking time to process that order the customers do have relevant um order ids or you know some values or booking reference numbers available during their checkout scenarios right they do have that order id using which they can raise relevant query right even if your booking was successful or failed right or partially failed or some error happened but the checkout experience is smooth so that the people do have a relevant order id using which they can generate relevant errors that happens a lot when you're you know booking and making reservations online right you do make a reservation but it's taking some time to the partner to confirm your order and to confirm that actually you've received the relevant um uh, booking as well so at that time you do still get a reference number and order id that is created irrespective of your booking that happened successfully or unsuccessfully so in those situations it makes a lot of sense to have a x else block a finally block so that it's comfortable for the users as well the clients as well the server the maintainers and the software engineers as well as well as the partners who are dealing with it and that concludes my talk for today as well i hope you did find it useful and you would be able to incorporate it all as well in the future uh, engineering practice that you do take care of thank you so much everyone Thank you very much Ria Banzal for this talk and with this we will close the session and uh, let's give her um th thanks again for this great talk and see you during the next conference Bye everyone thank you so much